So now we have arrived at the very important topic of linear least squares approximation. In this unit, I'm going to show you some examples where the purpose is to simplify the examples to one that is just rich enough to be able to illustrate the issues without being too complex to be unwieldy. So what do we have here? Well, this material was developed for a massive open online course called Linear Algebra Foundations to Frontiers. And registration for this MOOC started at some point, I believe it was in September, and ran for a little over 100 days before the MOOC was actually launched. And you can imagine that we were a little anxious to know how many people might end up signing up for this MOOC because we had no experience with that. So what I did was I started collecting data on how many people had registered as a function of the number of days since registration opened. And here is data for the first oh, 45 days or so of this exercise. And what do we notice? We notice that, roughly speaking, registration was happening at a constant rate, which means that we can approximate this data quite well with a line. And the question then becomes, what is that line? Now let's simplify the problem slightly and look at an example where we only have four points. So we can plot those points. And here we look at it a little bit more closely. And what we would like to do is find the line that best approximates these points. So here is one way of approximating it. And I think you can kind of eyeball that this is perhaps not that good of an approximation. So what does it mean to come up with the best line? And this is where linear least squares comes in. So how can we set that up with matrices and vectors? We know that the line that we are after has two coefficients, the slope and the y-intercept. So we would like to determine these two coefficients. And we know that that line has to go through the point 1, 1 1.97, etc. In general, the line has to go through the point chi 0, psi 0, which means that this equality must hold. And then this equality must hold because it has to go through the point chi 1, psi 1, etc. And if everything was ideal, then these all would be equalities because there is a line that goes through exactly all of these points. And if we then plug in actual numbers here, we get these right-hand sides and we get these equations on the right here. We can set that up as this linear system or this linear system. And notice that we happen to have written the right-hand side on the left here. But what we have here is a matrix. We have a vector for which we would like to solve, and we have a right-hand side. Now, again, looking at this picture here, I think we have a snowball's chance in hell of actually putting a line directly through all of these points. So this here is not an equality. What we, the best we can hope for is that we approximately go through all of these points. And the question then is, how do we find the best coefficients so that the line goes approximately through these points? So far, we have always tried to solve ax equals b. What we now find is an example where b is not in the column space of a. Let's go back here. Because these values aren't a linear combination of these two columns, there is no line that goes exactly through all of these points. So the best we can hope for is that AX is approximately equal to B.